one of the biggest problem that a lot of students will have questions with will be the inventory error questions. So the inventory error questions may come up in a lot of places. It may show up in the multiple choice to ask you to give you a scenario and ask you what is the impact on several numbers. And it also can show up in as a short answer question. The prof may give you multiple errors and you have to analyze the impact for several accounts for multiple years. And it, it may also show up in a case. So in a case, you have to identify what is the problem and how you will deal with the errors in the inventory. And now let's look at how you can resolve this kind of questions. So the approach I suggest is to use a chart and analyze one mistake at a time. So the reason why I say that you have to analyze one mistake at a time is because if you analyze multiple mistakes, you're going to make more mistakes on your exam. And I'm going to show you how you analyze one mistake at a time and ignore all the rest using the sample question. And now let's do a brief review of how the inventory error could impact several accounts. And the beginning inventory plus purchase equals to ending inventory plus cost of goods sold is the most important formula that you can use in determining what account is overstated or what account is understated. And because we have the inventory errors, errors it's going to hit our net income because the goods of cost of goods sold flow to the net income. And it's also going to impact our retained earnings because our net income will be part of the calculation in our retained earnings. So now let's do an assumption and let's go through how this one will be analyzed. So the mistake I make up here is an overstatement oh, on ending inventory in year one. And let's assume beginning inventory and purchase are both recorded correctly. So to make the formula balance, Remember, everything you do to identify mistake is to make the equation balance. If the left-hand side is correct, one number on the right-hand side is overstated. The other number in this right-hand side must be understated by the same amount to make the equation balance. And another thing you have to know is that whenever we have an error in the ending inventory. The ending inventory will be the beginning inventory for the next year. So this overstatement in the ending inventory in year one is actually an overstatement in beginning inventory in year two. And let's assume purchase is good. Ending inventory is counted correctly. And the only problem we can have to make this equation balance is on the cost of goods sold side. Because when left hand side is overstated, one number on the right hand side has to be overstated to make the equation balance. And then let's also look at the net income. In year one, our cost of goods sold is understated, so the expense is understated. So our income is overstated because the cost of goods sold and net income has the inverse relationship. So when net income is overstated, retained earnings will be overstated because re net income retained earnings has a positive relationship. Then let's look at year two. Cost of goods sold overstated. As we just talked about, it has understated because of the negative relationship between cost of goods sold and net income. And pay attention to our retained earnings. Retained earnings is accounting for all the cumulative impact of net income. When year one net income is overstated, year two net income is understated. As a net effect for the two years cumulatively, our net our retained earnings will be no impact because the impact in year one and year two cancel out. So that's why we have the iron turnaround in the second year and it's going to eliminate itself in year two. So remember, every time you try to figure out what is the impact on retained earnings, you have to account for the cumulative impact of the net income for all the previous years. 
And now let's look at how we do the comprehensive question for multiple errors.